8,000 people on O'Connell Street last, last night to uh, welcome home the Republic of Ireland after the World Cup and amongst them was Maeve de Barker, former Ireland International. Maeve, welcome to the studio. Thanks many for having me. What was it buzz like? It looked very good. What was it buzz like down there last night? Yeah, it was nice for the girls, I think, just to get a taste of what they, I suppose, what the, the crowds were doing back home, you know, and how much support they had back home because they were in such a bubble over there in Australia and they wouldn't have gotten to experience that. Mm. So it was nice, yeah, for them just to, to get a taste of it last night. Um, and everybody was a body language expert to what did, did, did they look at each other was there interaction what was said yeah it was kind of funny because initially they brought the management Vera and the management out on stage mm. and then they all went back off stage and then the yeah. players came on separately and um, they all got individually introduced to the crowd which was nice and a few players the American based had to go back to their clubs straight away so they weren't there but yeah it was interesting to see the interactions but then later Vera came back on the stage with the players so yeah it seemed to be all fairly amicable anyway yeah and we're reading in like a lot into what she said Stick with us. We'll we will win medals at tournaments. And we, is that the royal us or is that yeah. like are you hanging around? Um, she certainly not. You know, uh, was full bore into the party last night. And uh, if the FAI are of a mind. Uh, to move on from her after this she's certainly not going to make it easy for them what, what he's trying to say there is what did you make of the dance <laughs> <laughs> no I'm not no I'm the establishing the start of the show I have no issue with the dance <laughs> I preferred Amber singing myself but, but she's she not saying she she's not saying act. they're going oh it's been brilliant thanks a million you've been so warm and she's saying no no we're, we're on we go for her it didn't seem like any bit of closure or final goodbye or anything yeah. like that it was more a continuation which is um was I suppose slightly surprising but then again yeah like you said she's not kind of ready to say goodbye yet as such but it does seem like um, you know from looking out from the outside in that the writing's on the wall for her I think Mm. Why is it? Uh, just I suppose when you know players are asked do they support her and they decline to comment then um, you know maybe it's, it's a bit telling really that you know there doesn't seem to be that support there for mm-hmm. her and I think when you lose the dressing room I'm not sure if there's you know it's it's very difficult I think to continue after that it's funny that they, you say lost the dressing room but Ireland aren't they're not playing badly either at the same time no they aren't and like they're, they're actually their performances over in Australia were great and I, I do think if it, like it's keep has been repeated but if it was a, a purely football decision I think she'd be in it would be a no-brainer she obviously brought us to their first major tournament she did the same with the Dutch back in the day she brought them to their first um, Euros as well so she definitely has a football pedigree you know but I suppose when a player is essentially banned or sorry a manager she's essentially banned from working in the NWSL the um, US League at the moment until um, the allegations are cleared against her then um, I think I think really just at the end of the day what needs to happen is the, the internal review and ask the players what mm. they're thinking themselves mm. Yeah, the language of the statement certainly didn't suggest that this was um, you d- I don't think you word a statement that way if you feel that the outcome might be that she's staying on so we'll have to take a watch and brief on that it does uh, bizarrely we're sort of in a position for the reasons that you've outlined where we may well end up losing a manager and yet the bar for whoever comes in after that has actually been set really high like the expectations now into those uh, Northern Ireland and Hungary games in September like if we're not getting six points in the Nations League out of that suddenly it's like you know no matter who it is that's there what was all that about? Yeah, they have big fo- shoes to fill, you know. Um, in fairness, Vera did do, like I said, exceptional job results-wise. And it is, um, it's, a, it's a job that so someone would need to think a lot about before taking on. Obviously, if it was, it was an Irish person, it would be a huge honour or as a well, you know, a well-experienced um, manager from abroad as well. I'm sure a lot of people would jump at the opportunity. But like you said, it's a bit of a tricky one to go into because there, we have been on such a, I suppose, such a wave of excitement as well. And like the result us, like we did mention, you know, narrow losses and the draw to Nigeria, they were great considering the opposition we were up against. So, yeah, the new manager will, will be up against it, I think. I did, had a little bit of a look around last night because there hasn't been a huge amount of chat and, like, why would there be when somebody is still technically in a job but not a huge amount of chat about who the replacement might be, might be. and I looked at the odds um, and, admittedly, Tom Elms and Eileen Gleeson are the first two names on the list and I think there would be a bit of, obviously, continuity about that and potentially welcome. But it really struck me that we just need to be very very careful what we wish for beyond that because you know um, Phil Neville was number three on the list Colin Bell um, who you know uh, obviously did a job for a period of time I don't think was particularly pined for after he was gone 
uh, and 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 a litany of names after that. I you know beyond the top two, and maybe there's a less obvious option out there, but definitely a little bit of be careful what we wish for here. Yeah, it's true. I mean, I think yeah, both Eileen and and Tom. Eileen would have worked as an assistant before um, she went to Glasgow. Now she's obviously working in the FAI as well. Mm-hmm. So, I think both of them <clears throat> would be great appointments, like you said, for the continuity, and they'd be familiar with the the women's game in Ireland as well. It's a point that I'm always kind of harping on about a little bit. I know the the manager always seems to have the job in isolation of just looking after the national team when there doesn't seem to be any kind of p- the progression of the pathway within um, God, Ireland. Where did we hear that before. You know, like, <laughs> yeah, I know it's like a broken record. Record, but I think I really think that the yeah the success of a domestic league you know in turn ripples has a ripple effect onto the national team because we can see it you know with um, I would say the likes of Germany but that wouldn't have oh, <laughs> that's not a yesterday but, you might have said yeah that. exactly uh, you know France all the top league, the top nations do have uh, strong domestic leagues so from that point of view I think um, it would be good but yeah the likes of um, yeah Colin Bell did a job yesterday against Germany as well but mm. I I wouldn't foresee that he'd come back I'm not sure obviously what's yeah. the statement in the League of Ireland then we'll say if you look at like off the top of my head even closer to home Don O'Reardon Alan Murphy Collie O'Neill have gone from the men's to women's game but like what managers are is there is there any manager who could say like that he or she would be good enough to do this job or is there a groundswell in the League of Ireland that we're good enough to do this yeah I mean like Don O'Reardon he's a former manager of mine he has the pro licence and um, he's as qualified as they come you know the likes of him of course um, could be a possibility too um, so there is definitely yeah we have I think it is one of the kind of uh, shining lights of the FAI's their coach education department have been through myself and they do do um, implement really good courses and I think the quality of co- coaching has definitely improved I would kind of maybe classify as similar to Iceland in that regard they have a really really mm-hmm. strong um, for such a small nation they have such a strong um, coaching infrastructure and um, yeah there's there's plenty of names it's hard to think off the top of my head but uh, there's there's plenty of qualified coaches within the country you were saying yeah. it's more than managing the senior team this is a bit of a bigger role than that because obviously it's like it is a bit of a root branch top to bottom as well like yeah, well, I'd, I'd like to see it as a broader role, but I don't think, I think usually they are just, that's the issue, I suppose, their their job is solely to focus on the national team and get results, so mm. it's only ever going to be a short-term or a medium-term plan, there's never going to be a long-term plan. If you're in a job and you need to get results, it really doesn't matter what the grassroots levels are doing because they're never going to impact your um, success, so. Does the style of football matter? Um, it's hard to tell because I mean in this World Cup we've seen defences really um, outshine the attacks mm. in a way like and there is three teams like I was saying there that, that are in three countries that are in without having conceded a goal they're in the, the round of 16 so um, for me personally as much as we'd love us to be I'd love us to be playing expansive attack in football I mean there's also your, your leading yourself to be um, open for to get hammered as well mm. and that's something that going over to the World Cup I don't think we were ever going to it was never going to happen really that we were going to get trounced um, five or six nil mm. you know although seeing as how Morocco have gone <laughs> maybe it could have been a good thing get get um, get beaten six nil in your first game and qualify for the round of 16 but um, yeah I think sure yeah it, it would be nice like it was saying the men's team as well it would be nice for us to, to play a lovely brand of football but I think you just need to look at, at the players as well and the, what their strengths are mm. We could have been having very different conversations like if those fine margins um, had just even the narrowest of ones had gone our way the slightest little grain of ice had gone our way um, we might have been talking about a very different uh, future I think for Ireland maybe even for it would have been much more difficult conversation on Vera Pau obviously if uh, they had gone away and we'd also been looking forward to England versus Ireland on Monday morning like I what know. an absolute dream fixture that would have been it really once the, the fixtures were announced that's the one I was eyeing up you know what might be like and it would be huge you know obviously now it's, it's England Nigeria it doesn't have the same ring no. to it for us as Irish fans and it really would have been a great chance because we haven't played um, England in the last 10 or 15 years I can't remember it's it's longer than that we just never have friendly fixtures against mm-hmm. England um, which would obviously be, be a great fixture to have but yeah it's disappointing and you look at the likes of Jamaica who are through to the round of 16 having only scored one goal um, from a set piece so you kind of think maybe what might have been I know yeah. even the likes of Switzerland as well another 
another crowd who have kept three, yeah. t- three clean sheets, only scored two goals. Another crowd, I like <laughs> that, that crowd. Like. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's just, yeah, I mean, I suppose you're always going to think, it's not so much regrets, it's just more that like what might have been, maybe had we been handed a different group or had, like you said, maybe an OG knock on in or the penalty not mm. been conceded, like small margins, but at the end of the day, that's football, I suppose. Nothing, yeah. you know. What uh, chance do you give Nigeria? They obviously gave us a good insight into what they're about and uh, like a team filled with quality, obviously, what chance do you give them because England are looking against the odds last night given uh, some of the bigger uh, lights that have maybe exited the tournament and some that have maybe failed to impress in a way that we thought they might England I think are favourites for it now Yeah I mean their only slight hiccup for want of a better word would be the Haiti 1-0 win but at the same time they got the job done and they got mm. the three points so um, yeah they're definitely I think they're going to stand out in, in the next round Nigeria it's hard to say because I think they took the foot off the gas against us I think they were happy they knew a point would get them through so yeah. I think maybe we didn't see the, the same intensity from Nigeria in the second half against us but um, yeah I'd give them uh, give them a chance but I think for me I think England would be definitely favourites to progress to the quarterfinals there mm, and you have like Swiss against uh, Spain Japan against Norway like all good games what are you in an overall sense now that we know the last 16 who are you thinking I think as well there's standout ties probably Sweden USA as well it's the first yeah. versus the third in the world and they were actually grouped together in the last two World Cups in the group stage so uh, I think one was a nil all draw and then USA came out in top 2 nil as well in the last World Cup so there's a lot of history between those two teams and I don't think both either have like like lit up the tournament as such. Um, USA in particular, they uh, Portugal hit the post in the last minute. So had they scored that, USA be gone home, which would be you've huge, not been impressed with the USA at all. No, no. not really, uh, not yet. Anyway, yeah. now a lot of their games also have been at two a.m. So I've watched limited yeah, amounts yeah. of them too. But uh, I, I still think they always find a way. It's just their mentality. They find a way to win no matter mm. what. And even if it's not pretty, I would probably expect them to to be in the hat in the okay. quarterfinal as well your uh, main takeaway then from last night before we leave you um, obviously we had a bit of a sing song Amber Barrett leading the way on that front we had like the players you know shuffling are you going to uh, are you going to retire Neve? and like the sort of oh, I better crack a joke here and just try and get out of this and kick it down the road to another day what was your main uh, takeaway from events last night yeah those kind of questions in a way I'm like oh you know would you just leave leave her alone in a way and let her, her make up her own mind but then I suppose you compare it to the men's game and what would we be asking these questions to, to the men's players and Same it probably would be yeah. too so yeah. fr- from that point of it it's great to see conversations been moved on and such you know uh, interest around the team um, personally I'd love to see Neve stay on um, been a Galway girl as well and we would have played together at Salt Hill Devon I think she has a lot more to give um, to Ireland and I think her experience is just um, it's not replaceable you know so personally yeah I'd love to see her stay on but yeah it was great um, just to, you know great for them to like I said just to have their, their moment and have be able to see the support that was there and hopefully yeah it was a little bit obviously that the Vera thing just kind of hangs its slight cloud over the whole occasion but it was a really good celebration and um, it was great now we can look forward to the Nations League campaign like I said um, starting on the 23rd of September Yeah. What did you do today uh, Maeve? I analysed a homecoming <laughs> yeah, I actually did much it rarely happens, happens yeah, so, yeah. Uh, and we'll have much more to analyse because we'll have events one way or the other over the next few weeks as to whether she's staying or going and then we'll be into September and I think everybody's uh, really excited and looking forward to that um, and again with the Aviva particularly I think for people to get out and show their support uh, post World Cup uh, Maeve thanks a million for dropping in thanks a lot enjoyed that thanks a lot Maeve DeBarca there